Well, what an exciting time you're bringing uh, a circus to Roseman. And I'm here talking to Margaret Rodriguez. And you seem to know a lot about it. <laughs> Tell me about uh, the Grimaldi Circus. Well, I'm relatively new to the circus. I've only been in it for about 40 years. My husband's <laughs> like third generation. My sons are fourth generation. Uh -huh. uh, Grimaldi Circus is something we decided to do. Uh, we wanted to do our own thing as opposed to working for other people. Uh -huh. uh, my husband bought the tent a few years ago and we've had a few stops and starts before, but this time we've definitely decided to make a go of it. Uh -huh. And uh, we've come to California because people here in California, they seem to really love the circus. We've always had a very good experience here. Sure, sure. Um, what else can I tell you? And have the crowds been good? Pretty uh, not good. Too bad. Not uh -huh. too bad. Not too bad. It's a little bit uh, w cooler now. People like to get out. Uh -huh. Yes, that's true, I guess. Uh -huh. And this is Raul. Yes. Tell me, Raul, how, how are the California crowds for the oh, Grimaldi perfect. Circus? Beautiful. Uh -huh. I run all over the country for eight times with the eight. Ringling Brothers. I see. And then uh, I decide to work just to California. Uh -huh. Then we open our show and uh, with the same act that uh, we use in Ringling Brothers, ah. we bring to here and more people, more sure. contortionists, trapezists, uh, uh -huh. acrobat, uh, everything. And but California is a good state. A course, lot of people. It's the best one. A lot of money oh, compared yeah. to other places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the place to live. Uh huh. Well, I'm glad you came to Rosemont. Yeah, me too. Because we, it was a surprise for us. Good. Yeah, very good crowd and, uh, and very good people. Uh huh, good. Everything very easy. Uh huh. And it's like a home. A home being? Where does home from? Las you? Vegas. Oh. <laughs> we did La Vega, but here it's more quiet. Uh huh. Well, the neighbor, yeah, we all go to Vegas uh, from time to time. Time to time, yeah. Uh -huh, I, visit. I try to be out <laughs> so <laughs> I can work more. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, good. I'm very glad. Yeah. And uh, you're going to have a show uh, uh, Thursday, tomorrow? Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Every so day, 17th, seven. 18th, 19th, 20th. Yeah. Okay. And then on to Lake LA. Lake LA next week. Friday, Saturday, Sunday exactly. in Lake LA. Yes. Because that's not too far from here and no, some no. people go no, for... We like to do in all the, the small towns. Uh -huh. They give a nice show to the people. Uh -huh. And we're going to be in the, in the ground of the Oso restaurant, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, Sure. Yeah, also, yes. Again. Yes. Yeah. People know it. We're gonna set up there. That'll be good. Yeah. And where can you tell me the name? Where the name Grimaldi came from? From the circus. Grimaldi came from because uh, in England yeah. was uh, an Italian clown. Yeah. Funny guy. Yeah. And the British people make him the first clown in the world. Oh, I see. Sure. Yeah. Giuseppe Grimaldi. Okay. Was Italian. And right. then I take this this name to doing a, a uh -huh. something nice. Uh -huh. His father, because my father, grandfather, all, grandfather all my family was clowns. Really? Our clown. My father is eight. Today he do 88, 88 years old. Yeah. Today. Yeah. And he's still working in clown. Because <laughs> he likes it. Better than many people. Uh -huh. Many clowns. It's a beautiful. Thing. Well, terrific, terrific. All right. Hi, my name is Patricia Curran Love. I'm an educational columnist for the AAD News. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Carrie Wendler. She is an equestrian teacher, performer, and horse trainer. And I think you will enjoy this interview. It is a true interview about education. Hi, this is Carrie Wendler. Um, she has been my horse trainer for many years. She took my young inexperienced horse and turned him into a masterpiece of horse. She also has taken me and turned me into a masterpiece of horsemanship. So Carrie, how are you doing today? I'm great Pat, thank you. Now, how long have you lived in Acton, Agudulce in the Antelope Valley? Oh, uh, since about 80, 1980. Off and on I've been all over kind of the Antelope Valley. You have a very interesting background with horses and the life of the equestrian. Can you tell us about that? Well, I've been riding horses since probably before I could walk. 
Um, when I was born, I had hip dysplasia and had casts on my hip. But right after that, I started riding. I had a big buckskin horse named Buck. <laughs> and he was a 17 hand Olympic jumper. And he used to put his head down. And everybody wondered how I got on this horse. And I would get on his head and he'd lift me up like a giraffe and I'd scurry down his back and then I'd turn around and I'd go riding all over the field with him. And he was a character. He was a great old horse. He ha I had him till he was 42 years old. What about the old ranch? It seemed like you knew some pretty important people. We lived um, up in Chatsworth on a private road, Winnetka, back in the 60s. And uh, it was a really nice area. There was no homes up there. You didn't have Porter Ranch. Chatsworth was all full of uh, old ranches, thoroughbred ranches. Uh, orange groves, lemon groves, it was beautiful. We lived and uh, rode up there. My dad worked for Dan Daly. It's when they had the West Hills Hunt Club started. And that was in the days of the song and dance men. Dan Daly, Bob Hope, Fred Astaire, and Lauren Green had a ranch up there, Lucille Ball, um, the Gelsons. It was just a really nice area and a lot of open country and a lot of riding a lot of mountains. So it was a really beautiful time. I think you were in some movies, weren't you? We've had um, horses that were stunt horses and we've done a lot of stunt work in the movies. My dad um, did uh, On Deadly Ground. We did um, Lucille Ball's Annie Mame and he's got a great shot in there where he's uh, a close-up blowing the horn. And actually, even before Lucille Ball, there was an Annie Mame, but I forget the lady's name. Um, long, dark hair. Anyway, then Lucille Ball did it, and we had all our horses and hounds in both movies. And we did uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Our horses do a lot of uh, stunt jumping. We did um, a Tagar watch commercial, and the horses jump from building to building. And it was in... Uh, LA Magazine and um, Vogue actually for the advertisement for the watch. This is a picture of Carrie Wendler jumping a table set with Morning for Renard China. The client said not a dish was broken. I saw her jump over the table 12 or so times so the photographer could get the shot. An interesting part of your work is show preparation. Um, what about that? What do you do in show preparation? Well, it's kind of like anything you prep for. You want to look your best. So we get our horses what we call booted up, which you'll take all the little chin hair, you'll give them a bridle path, you'll clean up their ears, you take all the fuzzies off, then you give them a bath, and you make them shiny and pretty. and a lot of times you use conditioner and shampoo and then also what you'll do is for English we usually braid our horses and for Western they do a thing now called banding which makes the horses lay main lay quietly smooth against their neck and it's just a different type of braiding for Western um, when my horse is in the show you also he's white and you actually um, change the color of his hair so that he was more white. How did you do that? With a product called Silver, uh, Silver. well, there's a couple different ones. Silver Minx um, is a shampoo, and what it does is it takes all the yellow out of the white horses. So sometimes you'll use it on their tails, or you'll use it on your horse's feet, and you get them all really shiny and clean, and it, it cuts the yellow so it makes them look really, really white and glossy. Well, what are you doing right now? Um, right now I have a few students that we do ETI show corrals. Um, I'm doing clinics. We go down to Temecula. I have a friend who has a, a barn called Kingsway Farms. It's a thoroughbred ranch. They're right across from Galloway Downs. Galloway Downs has a magnificent three-day eventing um, facility, and we have a lot of cross-country riding and jumping. Um, 
my friend who owns Kingsway Farms, he's a huntsman for the Temecula Hunt in Rancho Santa Fe. And um, so this weekend, as a matter of fact, we're giving a clinic down there. It's going to be a mock hunt where we'll have new riders who are interested in learning about the foxhounds and fox hunting coming in and riding behind the horses and hounds, getting their horses used to the hounds. And then we show them what the facilities are like. We do cross-country riding. We'll walk, trot, maybe a little loping, maybe do some small cross-country fences, and just get them used to being out cross-country. And, I mean, we do a lot of that, and we try to get people a little more advanced to ride and get them involved in hunting, get them involved in showing, and just keep everybody involved and keep the sport going. Education doesn't always take place in a classroom. Sometimes the best education takes place elsewhere. I believe that. I believe life's experiences are with animals and I think people learn so much from their family, from the elderly, from their horses, from their dogs just a life experience. Um, I've always felt that and I feel that it's a really uh, a really good thing. You learn to be patient, you learn so much from your animals, how to love, how to care, how to take care of babies. Oh my goodness, I've raised so many animals and horses, I can't even tell you. And I learned so much about taking care of my own children before I even had kids because I either took care of baby rabbits or baby horses or baby kittens or something that we found <laughs> just, you know, just to learn and that gives you those life experiences.